Hello and welcome to the biggest SEO heist in history. Jake Ward has stolen the traffic of competitors by exporting the URLs of the competitor's sitemap, turning those URLs into article titles, and then he created 1,800 articles from those titles using AI software like ChatGPT. Now, what can Google do against that? And how is Google going to react to these types of AI um, article theft um, technologies? So Google has a really good option here in their draw card. Um, the whole um, idea is described in this book, Graph-Based Natural Language Processing. And I will tell you all about it now so that you don't have to read the book. So when Google sees articles, um, it sees them as semantic triples or entities. And those entities can also be described as the entity attribute value model. I'm not married to the idea that the EAV model is exactly what Google uses. They could also use semantic triples or RDF triples, which you can read about here on this Wikipedia page. But the basic idea of both methods is that you have an entity, which is the main thing that the article is about. That entity has an attribute, for example, Lionel Messi's age or the goals that Lionel Messi has scored. And then uh, there is a value like 37 years old, for example, or 5,000 goals scored, whatever it might be. And now what Google can do is to turn these entities into a graph based system where basically Google looks for the connections between the entities and Here we have some other examples of what that can look like. My example here in terms of the entity attribute value is not really showing the connections that can be made by sentences. That's also called SPO triples, subject, predicate, object. They're all the same things and um, it can look like this. So here we have an article that could talk about the Mona Lisa, which was created by Leonardo da Vinci. Um, and you have a person called Bob and he's interested in the Mona Lisa. And just based on the text in your article, Google can create these types of graphs. And what happens is if you copy the article of the competitor exactly or ask the AI to slightly rewrite that, yes, the words might be different, but if the article is about the Mona Lisa, you can't use a different name for the Mona Lisa. Therefore, the main entity in your article is still the same. And the relationships that Mona Lisa was created by Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci, you can change the words in how it's written. But again, that relationship in the article will still be there and will be the same. And that's where it comes from that Google is actually saying that you should create unique content because you will be rewarded for that. Imagine if you're a search engine and you have 10 articles that have exactly the same entities and values in them as well, uh, then it's quite hard to pick which one of them is actually the best. So. The way you can stand out later on, once Google adapts to this further, is by actually having unique entities, um, values, and attributes in your article. So this is again our EAV model. And the way you can get that done is by just doing deeper research, um, going into places to find data and interesting insights where your competitors haven't gone, and add those to your article so that you have new entities in your article um, and you can form new relationships with those entities. Um, and later on, the people who just create the same content are going to be, uh, I, I would say, more punished than before, because clearly this is an issue that's only going to get worse. And this type of graph model is Google's best approach to understand what the underlying entities are um, and their attributes and values. And now one thing I will say is that you cannot just make up these values because there are truth ranges that Google knows about. If you try to tell Google um, that your article is so unique and you try to convince Google that Lionel Messi is 99 years old, and yes, that's a unique value that nobody else would put in their article, um, but there are truth ranges that Google knows about because there's an embarrassment factor when you type in Lionel, Lionel Messi age. Um, if Google actually gives you the wrong answer here, it would be quite embarrassing for the search engine and Google would be deemed a poor quality um, search engine, right? If it wouldn't get that right. That's why inside of Google's knowledge graph, um, there are certain truth ranges attached to it and they are based on the authority of where Google has found that information. For example, if Google found it 
from Wikipedia, um, high, highly trusted source that will get a higher score. If your website now says uh, Lionel Messi is 99 years old, Google will consider it, but then weigh it up against other truth, truthful websites that Google trusts, and then basically discredit your website and mark you down for having the wrong um, information on the page. So I hope this was helpful um, and give you an insight into what's to come, uh, what kind of tools Google has in terms of understanding uh, you know, duplicate content, essentially. This graph-based model is really interesting and is certainly something that Google is going to have to use more as more and more people copy Google's articles. And if you're interested to learn more about that, I recommend you check out this book about graph-based natural language processing. Subscribe and like the video and I'll see you in the next one.